to this table to sing a new song to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. We come to celebrate a God who has loved us from the start. And we remember all the children that gather round God, that gather at this table that God has prepared. Would you please be seated? One of my favorite things about communion um, is that it is a table that cuts across time and distance. And so when we come together at this table, we not only bring all of who we are, but we stand at this table with the community of saints, the fathers and mothers of our faith that have gone before us, the brothers and sisters all around this world that are walking this journey with us now, um, and those, the children's birthdays that we celebrated, those who will be continuing this journey after us. And so we come to share in all of this fullness and in this presence of life. And we gather with all of who we are. And sometimes that's a very heavy heart and a very bent back. And it is even in the midst and especially in the midst of those times that we remember a God who loves us. And that a God who is working to bring forth life even when all we see is death, even when our bones are dry and brittle within us, even when all we see is the wreckage of violence and wars and of bones left that once were whole persons that we don't even know the names to anymore. Even then, as Ezekiel proclaims, we believe in a God who has the power to put bone to bone to put sinew on them, to put flesh on them, and to breathe into that devastation, the very breath of God, to bring forth life even in the midst of death. And that is why we come and gather, and that is why we will sing our hosannas next week, because God saves us, because there is one who is come, who is life even in the midst of death. And so we celebrate our belief in Jesus Christ, God's only son. We celebrate the one who will not stay away from danger, but will turn his face to Jerusalem, who will come back to Mary and Martha and to Lazarus, and who will be present. And my favorite part, who will cry with us who will feel the pain with us, who will know the broken and the devastation that we at times face in this life. But we'll stand right in the middle of that, maybe in the middle of the boxing ring at Umar, and say these words of life. To serve a God who hears us, and a God who answers when we call. This is what we remember at communion. The claim and the hope and the grief of Mary and Martha, God, if you had only been here. To know that God is here even when it is not the timing that we want and even when horrible things happen but to know that God will be and is working to bring forth life from death even when we can't see it, even when all we know and feel is that valley of bones, but to know that the God who knit us together in our mother's womb is knitting together a different future, one that is filled with hope and one that will bring life and bring it abundant. It can be cold comfort for those of us who have lost loved ones in tragedy and in violence. But that is why we gather together, and that is why we do this journey step by step together. 
so that when we can only see the valley of dry bones, we gather with others who see the promise of life and hope and hear that and watch them claim it for us until God's knitting work in our lives is done and completed in such a way where we can once more again join that chorus of salvation and that promise of hope. Because we know that there are dark nights. We know that Jesus wept and Jesus will weep again in the garden and the gospel will say that it is sweat of blood because of the pain that he will face. We know that there are dark nights. We are coming upon a night of betrayal, abandonment, and torture and death. We know that there are devastated places in this world like the valley that Ezekiel happened where the remainders of war and violence are very visible still. I come from a parish where we had one of our unhoused neighbors murdered on the porch of our mission center of our church. Um, I watched the brokenness um, that that violence brought. Um, I also watched the community of faith and Joel's community gather around him in a vigil of light and of prayer to reclaim that space for peace and for love and for hope once more, despite the violence that it had witness and that had been done to that sacred space as it had been done to Joel's life. And I know that you at Upbirth have this a part of your history as well. And there is a Girl Scout troop that is praying right now and thinking about how to reclaim the garden that Nick Browning started and the violence and the mark that it has left in this church and in this community. We come to this table to claim the very real power of love, to be able to speak it into the very real forces of evil that are present in our world. And so when we face these dark nights, we do not face them in our own power, but in the power of God's love that comes through us that is given to us by the power of Christ's love who stood in solidarity with us to the very end and who broke that end so that a new beginning might come. And so this is what we remember when Christ took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. When he took the wine and poured it after the supper and blessed it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. And it is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. There is real damage that we need healed from and there is real sin that we need forgiven for. And this is the table that we can come in our whole selves and know that God will meet us there in every part that we are proud of and every part that we are ashamed of and pour out God's spirit on us who are gathered and each and every one of these parts. Just as God will pour out God's spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, making them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be for the world a witness of God's body redeemed by his blood so that we may be a witness to be made one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world so that we might be a witness to the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, to the power of the Holy Spirit that is ours to claim to do this redeeming work and to the church to partner with Christ, to show that there is life, even and especially in the midst of death. This, friends, is our witness. This is our table. This is the power that is ours to claim. And so we give thanks for a Savior who made this table possible, who was whole, 
but who chose to become broken so that we who are broken may be made whole. A savior who is full, but who emptied himself so that we who are empty may be filled, so that we who are in the valley of the shadow of death might have a taste and have an assurance that there is a God who is working to bring forth life. May this be our hope, and may this be our power as we go forward into the pain of our lives and of our cities to speak a word of comfort and of new beginnings. This table and this power is, of course, not ours. Not ours as Epworth or not ours as the Methodist Church, but it is Christ. And so all who seek to follow Christ, who seek to be a partner and bringing and pointing to life in the midst of death are welcome at this table because goodness knows we can't do it alone. And so as we continue in prayer and reflection, the ushers will lead us and we will come and gather around this table and kneeling in confession and kneeling in prayer for forgiveness and also kneeling in the healing of God's redemption that we know that is ours. Once again, there is a donation um, to give. This is not to pay for this grace because there's nothing that we can do to earn it. But it is to right now practice being a witness to God's love and to share our resources and our power with our city um, and those who are not gathered here in person at this table. There is a gluten-free option available, and I'll be standing here up front. So if you need that as you come in, just let me know. Um, and then we will gather, Bill, if you will come and share in the bread and the cup together.